Hello and welcome back to the Entertainment Vortex. We are at Brendan Theaters today watching the much anticipated Avengers Infinity War. This is a non-spoiler review. We will not be spoiling anything. If you're interested in a full discussion of all the bits and pieces of this, check the description, end of this video. We will have a very long spoiler review where we just break down the entire thing. But you're safe here if you haven't seen the movie yet. If you're someone that's watched some of our reviews in the past, or just some of the highlights, you know that we are enormous comic book movie fans. We have kind of both sides of the coin, with me being a huge DC fan, I know this is a Marvel movie, and JB being a huge Marvel fan. We really, really look forward to these movies when they come out. With that being said, I was really nervous about this movie. First being that even though I am a major DC fan, Thanos by far is my favorite villain in all of comic books. I've been reading him since I was young, I own all of the Infinity series, including Thanos Quest, bagged and bored in mint condition. I am a huge fan of this character. And I just didn't know how they were going to do him correctly in this movie because there are so many aspects of the comic book version of this that we don't have in the movie version. The cinematic universe just never did it. So I didn't know how we were going to do it. The other thing I was worried about is how in the world do you take 10 years of movies and make this one epic enough to justify all of it building up to it? I just, it's kind of the same thought I had when the first Avengers came out. How are all these big personalities going to work on screen together? And obviously they did a fantastic job there. This movie, I really didn't know how they were going to pull it off. That is quite a feat. You've got these characters, 30, 40 characters, many of which were strong enough to carry their own movies that were super epic. You shove them all into two and a half hours and you have to make it epic enough to justify it all of them being together and the universe at risk. That's just mind boggling to me. Going in, I really didn't see how they can do it. I am pleased to say they pulled it off. This movie was fantastic. From the beginning of the movie, the gloves are off. Well, all except for Thanos' gloves. So as Nick previously mentioned, and as we've mentioned several times before, I am a resident Marvel guy. I've been waiting for this to take place for a decade at this point now. After the moment that I knew a Marvel movie could work in the way that I foresaw in you know my childhood dreams, uh, I knew that I wanted one of the greatest stories ever put to page to be told and told with justice. And also, as Nick mentioned, I had some hesitation because of the huge weight that this part of the storyline has for me as far as like my childhood is concerned. I love this storyline. I love the way that they choose to, you know, start this huge cataclysmic event. I was worried that it wouldn't hold up the same way as far as cinema is concerned, especially considering their intention is to split these things into parts, as they've done with a lot of things in this entire universe. You know, you have several different Guardians movies, different Iron Man movies. As you're building this world, like I said, you're only getting some bits and pieces of the overarching story. It started things off the right way. You don't end up with a lull, you know. It's not like something you feel like you're gonna have to wait forever to get what you're looking for. There's no necessity to start building a story at this point. The story has been laid out. Everything is in place. All of the pieces are there. Now it's just time to reap those rewards, essentially. There is a lot that happens in this. All of the major characters get their time. I, I feel that we got to see Iron Man and Cap and Doctor Strange and you get Hulk and you get Thor and all these characters are there and they have their story arcs and the Guardians are all there and everything just works well together. And I am extremely impressed. They do everything in the way that they should have. It's not something where, oh, we're trying to create a story from scratch anymore. You know, that some of the hangups of some of the earlier Marvel movies, like Captain America had a couple of uh, small issues that I had with it. The first couple of Thor movies I had some big issues with. It doesn't have that problem anymore because everything's been established. Everything's been set up. And now that we're into that territory, I think that we're gonna get some faster paced movies. And this was definitely a true statement about this film. Everything starts off moving very quickly and it doesn't slow down. There aren't any moments where you feel like you're, you're sitting and you've got people eating scenery and not, you know, not progressing the story or the plot or the action. Everything is in your face and it 
plays out the way that a comic book would in that way. Not all of this unnecessary dialogue or you know airtime that doesn't make sense. It could have used a little bit more time in my opinion. What they do in two and a half hours is an absolute masterpiece as far as this, this series is concerned. I believe this is one of those moments where people should take the screenplay for this film and really dissect it because not only is the movie dark in tone, but it's also hilarious at the same time and that's very hard to do. Not to mention that you have all these larger than life characters brought together all these storylines blending together big consequences big risks big stakes and all of it works seamlessly now i'm not saying that every piece of the story was perfect but there are a couple little things in the story that kind of bugged me and we'll talk about those in the spoiler section but none of them were anywhere near big enough to ruin the impact of this movie like not even close the amount of wow moments and just jaw on the ground moments in this movie are through the roof if you were a fan of these movies and you have been watching since the beginning or just caught up on all of them you've seen it all this movie is gonna blow your mind these characters are important to a lot of people and the cinematic universe they've created means a lot to a lot of people and I can't think of a better culmination than this Thanos you don't feel like he's necessarily 100% the bad guy here I wouldn't say that he's like an anti-hero he is definitely a villain but he is a strong villain that just makes sense and if they if they keep moving in this direction with their two most recent releases they've done excellent work with building villains that make sense and that have proper motivations and would potentially fit into a real world scenario aside from the giant larger than life abilities. Thanos. I really didn't think they were going to do it justice. Now I understand in the first Infinity Gauntlet comic series he's pretty much just a villain and it's not until later on do you get the wise Thanos that kind of has the greater good underneath him and he's not necessarily a villain as he is someone that you might just not agree with but in this movie they captured the wise Thanos well. Don't get me wrong he's BA and he's pretty evil at points but they did a really good job with his motivations they did a really good job with his decisions and they did a really good job with how the story wraps up this portion. And I really like that. I couldn't imagine a way they could have done Thanos better in my mind. This is the character I want to see. And this is just one more story that goes on my stack of Thanos stories that just make him the best villain. By far, is this the best Marvel villain they've done. Don't get me wrong, Killmonger was awesome. And they did an amazing job with Killmonger. And Loki, not really a villain, but he was awesome as well. He started as a villain, I guess. He was awesome as well. Those were their strongest villains. But Thanos knocks him out of the water. He, he not only is a multi-dimensional character, but you understand him. You understand his reasoning. He's not just mustache twirling, as I always seem to describe the Marvel villains as, because they're just evil for the sake of evil. You're just waiting for them to monologue and break out in some evil laugh, <laughs> like a, like a supervillain in an old style comic book, because that's basically how one dimensional they are. But this is probably the deepest villain I've seen in all of comic book movies, including DC and non-Marvel DC movies. This was really, really well done. As far as the other performances are concerned, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. There are several other characters that have been built up in this world and that it all have, you know, their own outings and their own movies. I feel like some of the standout performances in this for me were Tom Holland. He continues to show the ability to bring humor to the screen while also bringing strong emotions. He has one of the best emotional responses in this movie that I could mention. We'll talk more about specifics in the spoiler review, but I feel like his performance was nuanced, it was subtle when it needed to be, and it was just a a great job all around. And then I know it also seems like things are starting to wind down as far as Robert Downey Jr.'s performances in this universe are concerned, but he's continuing to add layers to this character, even though it's 10 years in the making up to this point. The Tony Stark that we met in Iron Man 1 is completely different than the Tony Stark that we know now. And just the weight that he brings into those scenes, he just has this ability to bring things down to a moral center, even though that wasn't necessarily his role for the entire universe. You know, it was essentially something that was done by someone like Steve Rogers, you know, for a good portion of things. I feel like he had more of the bigger picture in mind. Whereas, you know, it's difficult with some of these other characters because they don't get to see the things that he got to see in some of the previous movies. And I feel like that brought a new layer to that character and he just had this interesting arc. And while I do also feel like it may be coming to a close at some point in time in the near future, I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to hang on to Robert Downey Jr. But he's done 
an amazing job up to this point as Iron Man, and I, I look forward to seeing him continue his performance and see how things work out for him. The visual effects in this movie are breathtaking for the majority of it. There are a couple of little nitpicks here and there if you're really focusing hard and paying attention. If it's something that you end up watching at home on a smaller screen, it's may, they may not be things that you'll notice. On a big screen there are a couple of small flaws, but for the most part, with what they're able to do with a movie that has a large chunk of it being generated on a computer, they do an excellent job. It's always a spectacle to behold. There's always you know, a new action set piece or there's a new character that's being shown in a different way. And I, I really enjoyed what they were able to put on screen. Like I said, visually, it is just stunning for the most part. If you're interested in more details, definitely check out our spoiler review because we're going to go into great detail about this stuff. I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to say next. This movie gets a 10 out of 10. This was everything I wanted it to be. It was fantastic. I was jumping up and down in my seat. I was physically reacting. I was completely immersed in the movie. I just was astonished that one, it starts off with a bang. I mean, th this is not a slow start. This is not a slow burn. It's not like you get a little story. No, it's like... Bam, the movie starts and you're in it. And that was crazy. This is without question worth a watch. If you've enjoyed the Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point in any capacity, you owe it to yourself to see this movie. So this one is gonna be unanimous across the board. I'm gonna give this movie a 10 out of 10 as well. This is the definitive peak for Marvel at this point. They've done some excellent movies up to this point. I have a lot of favorites and it's hard to choose, but this one just feels like it's just got a little bit of an edge because it has everything. It has all of the characters. It has the best portrayal of a villain up to this point. I feel like potentially in comic book cinema. So I'm curious to know, what is your favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movie aside from Infinity War, which is my new favorite? Which one really had the impact on you? Uh, let me know down in the description down below. I'm curious to see what everybody's favorite is. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We do a minimum of four videos a week, including movie reviews, Funko Pop news, and a bunch of gaming content. If you're interested in getting one of our t-shirts, the link is down in the description. And as always, we hope you'll follow us into the Vortex. We'll see you next time.